Yo, what's up? This is your boy Serrano. Welcome back to another set of tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. So about three weeks ago, I did a video with about 25 tips. And then this is the second part of that video. So make sure you guys stay locked in to the end of the video because we're going to be going through all of the full tips and tricks and then i'll leave a link to the other videos so you guys could watch that one as well but make sure you guys stay locked in and if you're brand new to the channel i truly appreciate you for coming through if you're new but if you're already a part of the crew salute all right so the first tip that i have for you is called app continuation so let's say you're using an app and let's say it's like Facebook or something like that and you're browsing through and let's say you actually close the screen and you want whatever's on the out inside of the screen to show up on the outside but as you can see it locks and then when you lose everything when you unlock it well all you have to do to get that to work on the um, in a seamless process is go into your display settings and what you want to do is go into continue apps on cover display so now let's say i'm about to use an app for example like facebook so i'm going to go ahead and hit that turn that option on right there so you, you can see the facebook is on so now i'll go back into facebook right now i'll hit facebook so now while i'm using the facebook if i close the app it should show up on the outside so right there you can see that when once i closed it it actually changed to something else but it's only when you open it will it um you know i mean it's never going to keep that unless you do the continuation which is long holding the display going into settings and then going into cover mirroring and that's when it's going to basically be able if you turn that on whatever's on the inside of the display will show up on the outer display as well and another really cool customization tip is this sidebar menu and you basically go back into settings and you can turn that on by going into the display option again and you're going to notice once you have you're in here you're going to turn on this option right here called edge panels so once you have edge panels turned on uh, you basically you can now swipe out and get sh some of your shortcuts so you're going to see that it's you get a bunch of apps that you could put on here one of the cool things is you could tap that and it'll open up and if you tap another one it'll, it'll keep switching them so one of the things that's pretty cool with this is that you can drag it onto the display as a pop-up window or you can drag an app into split screen window and you could still have the three apps right there but another thing that you can use that for in another example is that let's say you drag that out you get this little um, gear icon on the bottom right hand corner so you all you want to do is make sure you drag that out right here and then you want to hit that right away and now you're going to be greeted with a customizable panels right here so they have live message people smart select tasks weather i'm going to go turn on weather you can actually get your music on here and then clipboards reminders and stuff like that if you want to get more you can actually get more from the galaxy store which is something that's pretty cool but you get the ability to actually customize the handle and you also get the ability to make it show on the main and cover or just one or the other so i definitely think that's going to be another solid feature another application that's pretty cool found inside of the toggles up top is a secure folder option and what you want to do is hit that and then it's going to say that you can be able to maintain your privacy keep sensitive data and content in a separate protected area on your phone enhance your productivity at a second uh, instances of your app so that you can use them in different scenarios so this is kind of cool for using the same app in different ways like and then if you open that up you can actually secure your files inside of here as well so what it starts to do is create this folder which is basically going to be password protected and then um, once this is created, you can actually drag stuff in here. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So I did create the password protection on here 
now I'm going to go ahead and hit next. So I did actually create the password protection on here for secure folder. So now here is my secure folder and it's giving me the option to add calendars, camera, contacts, gallery, internet, and Samsung notes. So it's pretty cool because you can actually put more apps inside of here and have them password protected. So this is going to be a really nice option to have if you want to put content in there and not have to worry about you know any kind of um, security breaches when it comes to your sensitive information so i definitely think that's pretty cool if you want to definitely keep some of your information secure and then as you can see it's password protected but do me a solid if you're still here just type in the comment section i'm still here so i know you're still kicking it with me and i just want to remind you to hit the like button so we can get this video out to more people and beat the youtube algorithm okay now this next tip is probably one of my all time favorite features on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold and even the Note devices. And so what I wanted to do is show you was the Samsung DeX, which a lot of people already know about, but a lot of people aren't really like taking advantage of it. So what you have to do is go into the Samsung DeX right here on your smartphone and I'm going to locate my TV. And once I hit start, I basically have a full desktop mode on the TV. So right here, you, it's going to load up on the screen, pair up seamlessly, effortlessly without any wires or anything like that. And I'm able to do this on Samsung TVs, T, uh, TCLs. Uh, I tried Sony and it wasn't working, but I did try a bunch like LG TVs. It worked. So most TVs, this is going to basically work with as well as desktops. And as you can see, if you look at the display right there on the TV, it's going to show you like all the desktop apps on this phone. So basically, if you scroll down, you're going to get a mouse option right down on the bottom. And so all you have to do is hit the option where it says use your phone as a touchpad. And so now you can actually you, you'll see a mouse appear on the screen um, right here. And I can go into the web browser right here, double tap. And I'm able to actually get work done now on a bigger display so I could stream media on this or I could browse um, the Internet like that. You know, I could just get a lot of work done, but I definitely think this is going to be a really solid feature for using your Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. Another feature that's really cool is the secure Wi-Fi which actually protects you on safe and secure networks. When you're in the public, you can access public Wi-Fi by hitting the secure Wi-Fi button. And once you're in there, it's gonna say ready to protect. So you could basically turn on auto protect to get protection whenever you're connected to an insecure network or networks in public places. So you go ahead, turn that on and just allow it. And then you probably, you just wanna hit all the time, most of it. It's just going to ask you to um, share your location or whatever. Um, and you have to say agree to the above data processing for geo location data. And so if you access that, you're going to actually get, um, you know, you definitely want to make sure you read the terms and conditions or whatever. But I think this is really cool for protecting you when you're out and about and you want to connect to, you know, certain networks. So you have to do is hit that button, auto protect and public Wi-Fi only. And, and then if you hit this, it'll say trusted Wi-Fi networks. And then you can hit the current, the network that you want to connect with so that you actually can connect to the ones that you actually trust. Another thing found in notifications is how you can change the notification pop-ups. So you go into notifications and then you choose your notification pop-up style. And then right here, you can choose the edge lighting style and the color by key keyword and even while your screen is off. So you can have the detailed view, which will give you pop-ups will appear in detail. But if you have it on the brief, it'll actually give you the ability to do different type of styles of pop-ups. So you could do your basic and um, it's going to light up the edge of the phone and give you a pop up at the same time. So each pop up is different. So, yeah, if you want to mess around with these, I think you'll have a good time with that. But I definitely like this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that one for my notification pop up style. But if you're in a meeting or something, you could still go into notifications again 
and you want to actually go into the do not disturb feature because it can give you the ability to um, not mute calls notification and other alerts except those that you choose and so then you can actually go down here and choose the contacts that you want to allow um, to be entered into the phone at that moment or you can just enter the time and schedule of when you you're not trying to be disturbed and you can put for how long and it'll give you the option to do that as well and so i think this is pretty cool because you can do not disturb your whole phone right here and now you won't get any notifications until you turn that back on so that's just a solid feature for if you're in a meeting and you don't want to get notified but maybe you just want to actually save battery that's going to actually help with um keeping your battery throughout the day now a lot of the times just the sound of your phone ringing might not be enough when it's in your pocket it might get muffled or something so another thing that you can actually do is go into the sound option right here you could get mute sound or vibrate and so you can just vibrate your phone but if you long hold this one and go down here where it says vibration intensity you can actually vibrate um, sound for incoming calls so the vibration sound won't be played when your phone is actually uh, connected to an external device so you'll avoid missed calls by playing a sound to make vibrations a little bit louder so you know that's going to actually be um you'll hear a sound a vibration sound as well as the ringtone which will actually help you when you want to hear a phone call and so another thing you should do is go into the advanced features and also go into video brightness and so right here when you actually go into um, this option you can actually change it from normal to bright and then these are the supported apps so it does support netflix youtube video prime video and the media player and suppose to be tube but this is good for when you want to actually get a more vibrant colors when watching videos and it's going to temporarily increase the screen brightness to make the colors a little bit more appeasing when you're watching media on here now if you are bilingual and you speak multiple languages you might want to go into general management and go into language and now you can actually add your second language to the keyboard so it's going to give you your uh, option to actually add your second language so you get spanish which is the first one italian you know um, portuguese and a whole lot more now while you're still in that mode you can go down and click samsung keyboard settings and then if you scroll down a little bit more you'll get the ability to turn on your ar uh, emoji stickers and stuff but scrolling down to more typing options gets you your enhanced accuracy and then you also get the ability to do multi-language text prediction for your other keyboard language right here so you get that feature which is actually pretty cool so it gives you the ability to do that and then you can see right here scrolling down you actually get you know handwriting swipe and touch feedback as well so you get your your, your touch feedback um, which will allow you to get vibration sound and character preview uh, which is another really cool thing you could also choose the back speed change different options here around um, customizing the symbols and the size and the transparency as well uh, which is another really cool thing and it's so very customizable as well so it's just another solid thing that i like about the keyboard options on the samsung now if you made it to this part of the video you're a real one but let's jump into the next part of this video and it's going to go into accessibility which is going to give you the notification for your flashlight when you receive messages or phone calls or notifications so what you want to do is go right here where it says uh you know um visibility enhancement and you can see right here you're gonna have some cool options to mess around with but i actually think it's gonna be in the hearing portion so let me just find it real quick so let's go into advanced settings and right here when you go into advanced settings you're gonna see flashlight notification so you can actually turn on screen um, notification flash when you get a incoming message or if you don't want to have that on you could select uh you could turn that off and turn on the camera 
flashlight, which will, if you get a notification, it, the camera is gonna go like that and it's gonna actually flash a little bit, like one, two times. And so that's how you know if you got a message. So that's another cool feature about this phone is that you do get the flashlight notifications on here. If you go into advanced features and click Bixby, you can actually talk to Bixby without waking up. So basically while you're in here, you click the option and advanced features right here. And so now basically when your phone alarm or ringer rings, you can say things like um, snooze, um, restart for the timer, for the alarms, answer phone and reject phone call. And so you're gonna be able to talk to Bixby, Bixby with the screen actually locked. So now whenever you receive a phone call or an alarm or uh, you know, a timer, you can actually um, mess around with that feature while the screen is locked. You also wanna turn the on a device mode on because now you can actually download a package to run key commands when offline, like setting a timer, taking a screenshot or turning on the flashlight. So once you turn that on, it's going to ask you to download the Samsung on device package, which takes about a second to actually install on here. Hey, Bixby, turn on flashlight. Hey, Bixby, turn off flashlight. Hey, Bixby, turn off flashlight. Another thing that can prevent car accidents is if you go into safety and emergency and click the option that says silence notifications while driving. So now if to limit interruptions like calls and texts and messages, the device can automatically turn do not disturb on when you're driving. And so your device uses motion and Bluetooth con configuration to figure out when you're actually in a moving vehicle and when you're driving. And I would stay in there and actually get familiar with the emergency SOS button, which you would actually have to, you know, press this button five times in case of an emergency and then it'll dial 911. And then the call emergency numbers automatically, it'll call after 10 seconds countdown. So you can share your emergency contacts as well with the SOS emergency um, support team or whatever. But then it, the other thing is that you can actually list the emergency contacts right here to make it a lot more easier to, um, you know what I'm saying, get your loved ones involved if something actually happens to you. This phone also does have a lot of features built in in the connected devices option right here. For quick share, you can actually share photos and videos with friends and loved ones that have a Samsung phone or you can auto switch buds from here, call and text on other devices. You can link your device to Windows. You can continue apps on other devices as well. And that also does give you multi-control. So you can use this um, while you're on a you know desktop, like a, it'll actually transition from screen to screen if you're using the tablet or a Galaxy book that supports the multi-control feature. And then you get the um, Android Auto as well. So just a lot of solid features for this phone when you're actually using the connected devices. Now inside of connections, I always have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on as well as the NFC payments for mobile contact payments contactless payments, but you could also turn on the ultra wideband to identify the precise locations of nearby devices. So you can actually connect to them a lot quicker, like Bluetooth and other phones that you want to connect to and other devices in your house. And then you also can turn on Wi-Fi calling. And basically this will be set up in moments and it'll basically walk you through how to set up the Wi-Fi on here. But right now um, you would, would have to actually check with your carrier You'd enter your information right here in case of a 911 and then this information isn't going to be stored or anything like that. So once you do that, you can actually use the Wi-Fi call in feature. Now we do have extra RAM just in case we want to make the phone a little bit more snappier. So we go into battery and device care and here you get your optimization for the battery, which takes about a moment or two and it will actually optimize the performance now. But if you go into memory, this is where you get your RAM plus 
and so it'll clean out residual apps. If you click down here where it says RAM Plus, I've added eight gigabytes of extra RAM, making my phone a little bit more cleaner when it's actually doing stuff on here. So it's actually going to be a little bit more snappy with the virtual RAM. Now, if I wanna enter split screen mode really quick while I'm using this phone, you just take two fingers and swipe up and then you can enter two separate apps very quickly. So I just really like that feature because you're able to enter the split screen mode very quickly. And so it basically takes you there really quick and you'd actually change it from vertical or landscape. So this is actually pretty cool because now you can see the screen has a full screen and there's no top notification. So it's all display. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So in order to do that, you go into your advanced uh, features on this device and after you click advanced features you're going to go into labs and you're going to go ahead and click multi window for all apps and it, once you click that on it's actually going to give you the ability to um, add split screen view on certain apps right here so once you turn that on for multi window for all apps it's going to basically allow you to do split screen on all apps that are basically that weren't compatible before. But then what you have to do is scroll down right here where it says uh, full screen and split screen view. So click that option now. And so now you're going to see you're going to have full screen in split screen. So that's how I was able to get that full screen menu when it came to using two apps at one time. Now, when you're using the flex mode, if you put two, th uh, three fingers on the bottom portion where the touchpad is it's actually going to close the app so it'll actually close that out and then you'll be put on the home screen automatically and if you double tap with four fingers it's actually going to take you to the other apps right here and it'll actually let you do the split screen window um, or change the app so you you can actually hit that and now you can just change the app really quickly so you, you don't have to worry about um pressing anything else it's just going to give you that option but you get all your options for split screen right here on the side so you can choose you know the app that you want to do a split screen with when you're in the flex mode and then right down here it's going to give you the option to choose different apps so you can choose i don't know audible and it'll change the app bring you back to the the dock so now you can close out by tapping with three fingers now inside of advanced features, you can toggle on the one-handed mode. And so once you have that feature turned on, all you have to do is scroll down with your finger. And what it does is give you the ability to actually use this device with one hand now. So you can basically just work it um, to your own size as you see fit. And now you can actually reach any app that you want. I definitely think this is solid when it comes to one-handed use because you're still able to use the device with one hand even while it's open. And so this is gonna be pretty clutch when you're using the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 when it comes to one-handed operation. Now, when you're doing a text message and you're about to send it, just long hold the MMS button and you can actually do scheduled text messages and you could pick a time and day. So now you can actually schedule it for the time that you want to send it out. So I definitely think that's pretty cool because you don't actually have to send out the text right away. You could actually schedule it just in case you forget to actually send it. Another really cool shortcut is if you're in your phone and you're going to make a quick phone call, all you have to do to call is swipe to the right. And all you have to do to send a text message is actually swipe to the left. And it's actually going to open up the text message in screen or the call screen. Another really sweet call setting feature is inside of the settings in the calling app. And all you have to do is enter the option where it says, you know, um, Bixby call, text call. And so if you turn this on, it's going to say answer calls without saying a word. Bixby will ask the caller why they're calling and you'll see what they say in the chat. Then you could type a response that Bixby will read out loud to the caller. So I think this is gonna be a solid feature for the AI um, call in on here. Another feature I like in the call settings is the call display while apps while using apps. So you could actually choose the smart smart the small pass the smart the small pop-up window or the mini pop-up window. 
And so when you're in a phone call, you could actually do other stuff because the phone call is going to be at the top of the screen. And so it's not going to block whatever you were actually looking at. Now, whenever I take a beautiful picture, what I like to do is go into the, I tap the I button right here and click these three dots. And what I like to do is remaster picture because the AI technology is going to kick in and then it's automatically going to calibrate the picture and the image to a more ideal look. And then you can just go ahead and hit save. So what it's going to do is actually make the picture a little bit more appealing while retaining a lot of the detail. Now, while you're actually in display, what you want to do is click easy mode and easy mode is like a simpler, basic or screen. So if you turn that easy mode on, it's going to make your phone like way easier to use. Everything is like giant apps. It's good for people who are hard of uh, eyesight and stuff like that. So everything's going to be more simplified. You won't have like you know much to look at when it comes to widgets and stuff but it's gonna have all your contacts here and then just the simplified android system without like your widgets and stuff like that so if you wanted to actually exit that mode you could actually do so really easily but you would have to go back into the display options right here and then go into display again and then you could just turn off the um simple mode or whatever the easy mode right here so it gives you a more basic layout now if you go stay in there and hit taskbar taskbar gives you the bottom tray right here of apps so you can actually pick different apps and drag them up from the top making it more easy to multitask so if you click up to two i actually chose up to four so now you can add an additional uh, four more apps on the bottom. So now you it's giving you way more apps to mess around with So that's actually gonna be more um, Useful when you're doing multitasking. So I like to add a little bit more apps at the bottom Making it more easier to customize the the panel on here So that's definitely another solid feature that I wanted to show you as well but hopefully these tips and tricks were helpful in any way possible if you did find this video helpful in any way possible make sure to hit the like button and um i also like this block gesture with the s pen so you can't swipe up because a lot of times you'll be drawn on the edges and it'll go back so you'll actually have to use your finger to actually go back when you're um, doing navigation but hopefully you guys did find this video helpful if you're still here just type down below i'm still here so i know you're still kicking it with me and i just want to remind you to hit the like button so we can get this video out to more people and i'll check you guys later peace